This is Ringler Radio, where you get all the latest news and information about structured settlements from experts across the U.S. Ringler Associates, celebrating 35 years of successfully helping injured people and their families. Ringler Radio is made possible in part by the life markets that issue structured settlement annuities, including Allstate, American General, Liberty Life, MetLife, New York Life, John Hancock, and Prudential. Now join Ringler Radio host Larry Cohen. Welcome to Ringler Radio, everyone. I'm Larry Cohen, head of Ringler Associates Northeast Operations, and we're certainly glad you could join us again today. Well, the BP oil spill in April has taken its toll on the coastline of Louisiana and the entire Gulf Coast. Besides the fishing industry and environmental damage, the tourism industry took a major hit, with vacationers staying away during summer months, resulting in surrounding businesses suffering uh, quite substantially economically. Well, today on Ringler Radio, we're going to look at the recent lawsuit against BP and some of the others uh, that are involved in the explosion. And we're going to look ahead to compensation for those affected by this uh, disastrous spill. And joining me today to help is my colleague and co-host from Seattle, Washington, Tony Robinson. Tony uh, manages the operations for the Greater Pacific Northwest for Ringler. He's ha- he has over 17 years of experience in the insurance and uh, finance field. And of course, he's been doing structures for quite some time. And he specializes in uh, all kinds of personal injury claims, medical malpractice, product liability, maritime. You do a lot of it, Tony. Welcome to Ringler Radio. Hey, thanks, Larry. It's uh, great to be back on the podcast, uh, the best in the business. Well, thanks a lot. Well, our special guest today is uh, really renowned attorney Jerry Beasley, the senior uh, partner of uh, Montgomery Law Firm of Beasley, Allen, Crow, Methvin, Portis, and Miles. Uh, Jerry's practiced law as an advocate for plaintiffs since 1962. And during his career, he's tried hundreds of cases, and um, quite most of them successfully. Jerry's numerous courtroom victories include landmark cases that have made a positive impact upon society. And Beasley Allen recently filed a lawsuit to recover revenues from tourist traffic affected by this oil spill. And uh, welcome to Ringler Radio, Jerry. I know we're going to talk a lot about this today. Welcome. Sure. Thank you, Larry. It's it's a subject that a lot of folks uh, probably outside the Gulf region probably don't fully understand. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you, like anything else in life, Jerry, uh, the, the, with the passage of time and so many other things on people's minds, uh, people that aren't affected locally like that, it tends to drift, their minds tend to drift to other issues and other problems. So it's good that you're able to focus us right back on this today. Yeah, and, and one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that everybody knows about Alaska. Yeah. And you, you will have the same amount of spill every five days in the Gulf uh, that they had in Alaska. That, Total. that gives you some idea of the scope of it. Thanks. It's, it's massive and, and long-lasting. Well, you guys, uh, you, you folks at Beasley Allen recently filed a, a lawsuit on behalf of several cities and uh, municipalities for losses in revenue. And tell us about the lawsuit and what you're trying to accomplish. In, in that particular case, uh, th- this is on a route to the beach, to the beaches. Mm-hmm. And uh, all of the cities had a drastic uh, reduction in, in tax revenue sales tax primarily, mm-hmm. uh, some lodging tax, but there's several cities involved. We're also representing the state of Alabama mm-hmm. and its claim. And, of course, uh, all states ultimately will have claims, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, and Florida. And so uh, the state's claim would be not only tax revenues lost, but also the environmental damage the cost of, of all the various activities that had to be involved from the various state agencies that cost the state a great deal of, of money and effort. No question. And, of course, in this economic time, the last thing states and cities need to lose is tax revenue. So uh, it's really it's really a problem. Well, hey, Jerry, I know BP is, is the main or the primary defendant. Are there other entities that are going to be involved with this now sure. or, or down the road as you foresee? Yeah, it? and, you know, BP is, is, has been the featured company, so to speak, but you also have Transocean, you have uh, Cameron, and you have uh, the Halliburton, which everybody certainly knows about because of their political activities. So uh, all of these companies, plus you're going to have the people who – uh, manufactured the chemicals that were dumped in the Gulf, and that's that's the subject that uh, most people in the media have really not picked up on. Uh, the, the chemicals we, we, in terms of uh, the, the dispersant that they dropped okay. in. That sure. what's what's happened there is that uh, the, much of the oil was was actually forced to the to the 
floor, the bottom of the Gulf. In fact, uh, a recent study uh, showed that, that they, they were finding at least two inches of, of oil lying across the, the floor of the Gulf. And uh, the, the long-term effects from that are really unknown at this point in time. You, you know, Jerry, it was funny because uh, there was, for a time there, everyone was saying, well, where's the oil? And uh, it was almost as if, wow, this this somehow got dispersed and is okay. And sure. and all of a sudden, there you find it on the sitting on the bottom in a, in a, in a yeah. big, thick layer. That's, Plus, uh, you have plumes of oil below the surface that some were 22 miles long and, and uh, you know, a great deal of oil there. And But yet, BP's PR machine was putting out the message in the federal government fell right into the trap. They were saying it's all gone and all over, and it's and it's far from over. Well, I know that a lot of the some of the cities uh, anyway that you've uh, brought into this uh, on behalf this lawsuit on behalf of their uh, interests are not quite right on the Gulf. I mean, some of them are, right. are far back, and and I know there's been a lot of conversation uh, about how far back from the coast can can entities truly uh, have a, an impact to be able to file a, a claim like this and. and you're talking about tax revenues, obviously lost, and and yeah. other business revenues. What about the general nature of, of of business down there in Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, and Florida? Back from back back from the Gulf as you move back into the Gulf, I'm sure they've been affected tremendously. Yeah, it, no no doubt about it. In fact, even in Montgomery, the capital city, mm-hmm. we've had we've had problems here. But the closer, obviously, you get to the problem, the more massive the problems are, mm-hmm. and or as far as the losses and the damages. Uh, we're representing right now, for example, uh, owners of restaurants, uh, motels, condo rentals, mm-hmm. fishermen, shrimpers, uh, you name it. And uh, the effect on the coast all the way, of course, Louisiana has had the greatest laws. Mississippi and Alabama, certainly a great deal, Texas and Florida. So you, you, you've got a a number of states that are directly involved. And then you have, for example, we represent people as far away as Chicago. Interesting. Brokers who were buying seafood out of the Gulf and uh, distributing it nationwide. And you, this, the losses are so massive that you've got people right now who, who are filing bankruptcy already. On the you know, it's, it's, it brings up a point. It's, I think it's easy for the rest of us to understand. The media has done a pretty good job of covering uh, you know, how this has affected somebody who owns a restaurant or sure. uh, owns a hotel, works in a hotel, or is in the fishing industry. But, you know, how does it affect the cities that you're talking about? What is the economic impact on those regions? It, it's it's and, a lack, you know, uh, lack of, of travel through the cities. And, and for example, uh, I-65 that goes down to uh, the coast. Uh, you, you have all, all the cities have lost the sales tax from people who would come by, purchase meals, stay in hotels, motels, and then going down to either Florida or the Alabama coast. Uh, but, but you've got so many people hurt here, such a broad spectrum of folks that, that have been directly affected. Then you have the indirect effect. And, and of course, uh, I don't believe I've ever seen any disaster or any any situation like this where you put the, the people at fault in charge of the operations. In fact, the media couldn't get to certain parts of the coast because BP wouldn't let them in. The Coast Guard was letting BP uh, be traffic director, so to speak, and they were hiding the, the problems. For example, a lot of people don't realize that we've had tremendous people affected health-wise already on the coast. And, and much of this because of the chemicals. Yeah, the disbursements. Yeah. yeah. In fact, they were they were actually spraying this these chemicals at night, and much of it was was, was coming on shore. Mm-hmm. And you're not supposed to do that. Well, you know, millions of you know we all saw it. Millions of gallons uh, yeah. of oil poured into the Gulf, just spewing out of that. Uh, they had the camera on that on that uh, pipe that was just spewing oil for for days in fact 87 days worth of this uh, debacle what about the environmental damage uh, i know s- some of it is somewhat hazy because we don't have all the facts but what has been the environmental damage down but, there on the coast in terms of beaches and recreational fishing areas and just uh, you know the breeding grounds of 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 of, uh, of, of wildlife 
Yeah, I don't think anybody really knows at this point how how long what the long term effect is going to be. Obviously, you're going to have a short term effect that's going to be major. But we're looking at something here that could last twenty years, thirty years. Nobody really knows at this point. And again, to how BP is operated, they went in and hired every college professor all the way from Florida to Texas who had expertise in, in this particular area insofar as the, the, the Gulf is concerned. Mm-hmm. The only school, to my knowledge, that turned them down was the University of South Alabama. Mm-hmm. And they weren't doing this to just have a great number of people doing studies. They were doing it to keep these people from being expert witnesses on behalf of victims or states or even the federal government. In fact, the contracts that they were required to sign had confidentiality provisions that prohibited the person from sharing any research they did with anybody other than BP. Interesting. You, you mentioned um, there's some parallels here. We, we talked about the Alaska spill earlier. Uh, we yeah. talked about the environmental impacts and taking 20 or 30 years to shake that out. And, you know, obviously the, uh, the Exxon Valdez spill is, uh, was cleaned up relatively quickly, but the legal process that came out of that took decades to resolve and is still lingering. Um, and I think, as, if I recall, if my research was right, that the, the outcropping of the Exxon spill, the uh, Oil Protection Act, kind of came into being. And I'm, I'm curious if you could share with us, you know, what's required under that law, what type of precedent there is for, for your lawsuit, and kind of lead us into the more it, the, it's, the, it's more on the legal less, world here. It's more or less a, a strict liability statute that's supposed to protect the uh, people and the environment, and it, it has elements of damage that can be recovered, the, the actual cost of cleanup and things like this. You also have what's called common law remedies, negligence, and uh, in this case, it's going to be gross negligence because of the uh, risk that, for example, BP ran knowing that they were putting the entire region at risk by some of their decisions. They were trying to to get that well in, into production, and as a result, they made some very, very bad decisions. And, and this report that they put out is more of a blame-shifting uh, document than anything else. They're trying to bring all the other folks in. and uh, But th- this act, uh, there are some provisions in it that favor the oil companies. For example, they, they, Transocean has used uh, an antiquated... Uh, the Titanic era disaster <laughs> where they have this so this act that, that says that if a vessel sinks, then your damages are limited to the value of the sunk vessel, if that's good grammar. It's kind of tough to hit an iceberg in the Caribbean, though. Absolutely. <laughs> and, but this, this whole thing has opened a lot of eyes, and it also makes you realize that the federal government did such a lousy job of, of regulating this industry, the entire industry, not just BP. And they let them get away with a lot of things that, that really uh, should not should never have happened. Jerry, let me, let, me, let me follow up on that for a second, because sure. obviously when you have something like the Oil Pollution Act, they had to go through Congress and you have the lobbyists, and you, as you mentioned, the oil industry certainly was at the table there, it looks like. Uh, what is the culture and the climate Right now, among the political uh, elements in the on the Gulf Coast, are are you finding that the the Congress folks and and the senators from the states affected here are working with or more working with you to try to resolve this issue on behalf of the people down there, or are they somewhat protective of the interests of the industry? Well, starting with the local level, uh, the local political leaders, the the mayors, the uh, county commissioners, folks like this are are up to their ears in problems, and, and they are fighting hard, and they are being uh, taken advantage of by BP, for example. They know that these folks already have budget problems because of the economy, and when this disaster hits, that's thrown on top of that. And so they're throwing out small dollars uh, at, at these political leaders on a local level, hoping they will take it, and then trying to wipe out their massive responsibilities for later by paying little pennies on the dollar, so to speak. Playing on but, the desperation of the sure. people. Yeah. But, and they're doing the same thing with governors mm-hmm. on the state level. 
as you go up the chain, for example, the Congress, uh, BP and all the oil uh, companies generally are so powerful in Washington mm -hmm. that uh, I'm not sure that, that, that these folks are free agents. <laughs> and uh, that concerns me greatly because much of what was put in the Oil Pollution Act favors the oil industry as much as it does the, the states and the, and the people in the regions that would be affected. So I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping that they won't have so much power and influence in Washington that, for example, in the Bush years, uh, much of what we are paying for now came as a result of Dick Cheney and his gang yeah. uh, putting their folks in charge of the regulatory agency. Yeah, well, and, he had a big role at Halliburton, that's for sure. Absolutely. And uh, he also had a tremendous uh, influence in, in packing the agency with folks friendly to the oil industry. And just as an aside, uh, and, and we may not know this yet, but do you foresee the election coming up in the fall here to to change any of those individuals that might be on the you know in either party and either in either side helping you? Does do you see a, a better a better day after November? I, I hope so, but it, the way our political system is structured, and especially now that corporations can give unlimited amounts of money to politicians on the, on the national level. I don't know. It, it concerns me. Uh, I'm afraid that even with this, the the aftermath of this is this massive disaster, that the oil industry still has so much power and influence in Washington that over the the, the upcoming elections could be affected adversely rather than a positive way. I, I've heard very few, for example, politicians uh, criticizing BP other than the folks. Who, who are actually carrying out the investigations. But as far as the people back in my state, I don't hear a great deal said about BP. You know, one of the one of the dilemmas, though, Jerry, and I think you know it very well, is that the lifeblood of this Gulf Coast has a lot to do with the oil industry remaining stable and remaining vibrant sure. in, that, in that Gulf. So, so for all of the corrective actions that are required to clean up this problem and to, to change some of the rules and, and regulations – you know, no one's looking to thwart the process so that, that the people there are suffering even greater into the future. It just needs, you need a safer process you and do, a more you need, fair process. You need a real regulated process. And a regulated process, absolutely. And, you know, for example, we've got wells and, and rigs in the ocean right now that are, that are dormant, that are not, mm -hmm. uh, and, and who knows uh, what may happen there as far as leaks. won't be anything like this, hopefully. But, uh, you know, you take an industry, you take this company specifically, Look at look at the net profits, VPs uh, mm -hmm. net profits. They were making ninety three million dollars net profits per day. Mm -hmm. I mean that was that, that that's un, that's almost impossible to comprehend. That sounds like and, that sounds and, like Tony Robinson money. To yeah, be honest. well Tony Tony can identify with plus or minus a zero or ten. <laughs> no, seriously, you, you yeah. look at look at their net profits, and this this is what the you know they, they have all sorts of loopholes and all sorts of ways to hide income, and, and by that, I mean, well, anyway, that, their net income was in the $20 billion range per year for the last five years. Yeah, it's amazing. Though, so that, they're, they're not a mom-and-pop operation. No, no question <laughs> And you take it. Transocean. Transocean moves to Switzerland. They first go offshore and then to Switzerland simply to, to keep from paying taxes in this country. So I wanted to actually, I want to talk a little bit more about the Oil Protection Act. As, as I understand it, it, it that had some benefits or was supposed to have some benefits to provide protections or, or remedies, as you put it, in the event of this. But there was also this $75 million cap. And that is that for all claimants under any that, kind of law that, that, that could would, be applied that would, in this situation? That would not include gross negligence and it hopefully would not include common law remedies. Uh, we have in a, a running battle right now with the companies on that issue, so I really can't say too much about that. But the, the the cap was put in. That, that again shows you the power of this industry. They were able to put a, a, a limitation of damages in the act, which it, is really incomprehensible. But it, isn't it true that that cap has been waived essentially for this disaster? Uh, it, it really hadn't been waived. Uh, in fact, Congress is trying to, to expand it by increase it, and we we believe that it, it'll be. Everything now will be in, in New Orleans in the multi district. I got you, and uh, hopefully it will will not be a problem. 
Well, before we take a break here, I just want to ask, you know, let you speak just for, for a minute or so on, you know, in addition to the economic impact on the cities that you're representing here, what has uh, this disaster done to the fiber of the communities and the society uh, down there? What has it done to the heartbeat of, of the Gulf in well, terms of the people? It, when you go there, uh, a, 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 when it first happened, People had hope, and they they thought that the government was going to protect them. Number one, and they thought that the the the, the process, our judicial process, for example, system, was such that they they, they would ha- not have to worry about being taken advantage of. Well, we we see this so-called uh, fund set up, twenty billion dollars, which sounds like a tremendous amount of money, but it's not going to be nearly enough to take care of the claims and. Uh, then you put a man like Feinberg in charge of it, who's being paid by BP, and who won't disclose how much BP is paying and what his compensation package is, and you see that hope sort of dwindle away to to a, a feeling of desperation, so to speak. And you've got you've got folks on the Gulf, you've got people in the states making up the coast, coastal region, who right now don't see a great deal of hope in the future. Uh, you, you've got Businesses shut down, mm-hmm. businesses going into bankruptcy, fishermen, shrimpers, folks who've made their, who, who don't know how to do anything else except what they've done successfully, even with the hurricanes. And that's, that's something to sort of put in context. You can get over a hurricane. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it hurts, and it, 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 it tremendous damage, but you can get over it. Here, we won't get over this oil spill and the chemicals dumped into the Gulf for years, for generations. Well, that's why those those folks are going to need people like yourself, Jerry, to represent them and to fight those battles because uh, certainly they can't do it without you. They're uh, they're in a, in a tough way. Well, let's take a quick break right now and let's get back in a minute. We'll be back with Jerry Beasley and much more on the lawsuits and the compensation and the, and the devastation coming out of this uh, BP oil spill down in the Gulf. We'll be right back. This is Ringler Radio from Ringler Associates. Quite simply, the undisputed leader in structured settlements for 35 years. Ringler Radio is celebrating its sixth year right here on the Legal Talk Network, produced by broadcast professionals. Ringler Associates, the only broker you need. Listen to all the Ringler Radio shows. Just go to ringlerassociates.com or legaltalknetwork.com and click on Ringler Radio and choose a topic. Since 1975, Ringler Associates has provided the finest structured settlement services to all parties involved in the settling of physical injury claims. Experience counts. Over 23 billion in structures benefiting 166,000 injured individuals and their families. And one of the few companies that truly enjoys the trust of all parties in the settlement process. Did you know you can download Ringler Radio to your iPod? Just go to iTunes and subscribe to the Legal Talk Network. It's free. We invite you to listen to other shows on the Legal Talk Network. It's free at www.legaltalknetwork.com. Did you know Ringler Radio is one of the top three rated shows in iTunes? Thanks to all of our listeners who download all the Ringler Radio shows. Engage your brain. Keep up with the fast pace of the legal profession. Go to LegalTalkNetwork.com and listen to all of our great legal podcasts. They're free. It's the office calling again. Don't answer it. Why not? I'm listening to Legal Talk Network podcasts to get my CLE credit in West Legal Ed Center. Oh, yeah. I need to do that, too. Where do I find them? It's easy. Just go to LegalTalkNetwork.com and pick a program for CLE, click on it, and start listening. Or go to WestLegalEdCenter.com and choose from any of the Legal Talk Network programs available for CLE. That's perfect. The office can wait. Welcome back to Ringler Radio. Glad you could join us. Our special guest today is Jerry Beasley, the senior member, senior partner, really, of Beasley, Allen, Crow, Methvin, Portis, and Miles, one of the great law firms uh, based in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Tony, why don't you ask uh, Jerry a little bit more about this uh, 
BP suit. Yeah, I uh, and I know the uh, Justice Department has recently commented that it's contemplating some lawsuit against BP for the damages related to the spill. And I, I guess I'd like a little more information, at least what you could share with us, as to how that affects uh, your suit. Are they making similar claims to the suit for for the governmental agencies or the cities and municipalities that you're representing? You know, so what, really, how do those two relate if the government, if the Justice right. Department does indeed file a suit? It, it, would, it would have no effect on the suits that we've filed, and uh, it'd be separate, totally separate and apart from our litigation. Uh, everything that we're handling would be ultimately in the multi-district uh, in New Orleans under one judge, and uh, it, 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 the federal government should file suit, and hopefully they will. That was my understanding that they were at least considering that, and a lot of that would be fines and penalties that the government would collect. Uh, the real problem that, that I see right now is the fact that they've set up this $20 billion fund to pay claims. Let me ask and, you Let me ask you about that, Jerry. Let me, okay. let me talk about that $20 billion fund. My, my understanding was that BP basically said that most of the victims are not entitled yet to sue and must go first to the $20 billion fund. Is that, is that the that, way it that works? Is, that's their position right now. In fact, they have filed a motion in the uh, in federal court in New Orleans, and they are asking the judge to require everybody to go through this administrative claim process first before they can pursue the lawsuits. Don't think that's going to happen. And obviously, they they like very much for Mr. Feinberg to be handling claims uh, because of, of the way it's worked out so far. For example, yesterday in Orange Beach, Alabama, they had about a thousand folks show up to meet with Feinberg. He was an hour and a half late, number one. <laughs> when he got there, the, the questions got pretty pretty heated. And w- one of the folks there, who was a state senator, asked everybody to stand who had filed a claim with either BP or Mr. Feinberg. But just about everybody in the room uh, stood. Mm-hmm. Then he said, will everybody remain standing? The rest of y'all sit down. Folks to stand now are those who have been paid. And, and out of the thousand folks, you probably had a hundred maybe that, that remained standing. Then he said, How many of you got full compensation for your losses? You, you stand, one person. Yeah. That, out of a thousand. That's gonna be that's gonna be a tough situation down there. Now let me let me just clarify. In the nine eleven fund that, that Mr. Feinberg also administered, people either went to that fund and if they did go to that fund, then they, they were really opting out of the ability to sue that is correct. other entities. Is that the way it's going to work here? A final payment requires that. And although you, you can get these so-called emergency payments and the uh, interim payments, but when you get a final payment, which means that you're releasing, your, uh, you're releasing yep. any company from future responsibility to pay you for any future claims. So... Yes, uh, final payments require a person to forfeit or waive or give up their right to go into the court system. Now, I, I heard Mr. Feinberg on, uh, I think it was on the radio a day or so ago, talking about how uh, he's also concerned about something else, which is probably real, and that is the potential for fraudulent claims or, or claims that aren't, that aren't really legitimate claims being presented in this process. and having this uh, dilemma uh, occur. Are you, are you seeing any of that? We, we represent over a 1,000 folks right now, and before we filed the claims, we looked at what they had, the records, the tax records, any, anything to, to back up their claim, and we, we found we did not have a single person who had a bogus claim. Uh, you, obviously, you're going to have somebody who tries to, to take, advantage, get, yes. get, take advantage of any system. And fortunately, you should have a, a mechanism to, to ferret out those folks and, and put them out of the system. But, you know, that's why the court system is so important, because you go before judges and juries, you're going to have to prove your case, both liability-wise and also damage-wise. And so uh, I, I don't see that as a major problem. Uh, you're going to have a very small percentage of people who try to take advantage okay. of, of, the, of Feinberg's group. Okay. The other thing I, that I heard him say was uh, what's causing him some del- uh, some problems and, and, and a bit of a dilemma is how far back from the coast do you go before the claim isn't necessarily a, a, a real 
impacted claim from from the from the actual explosion and, and the leakage. In other words, he talked about uh, a restaurant in Richmond, Virginia, for example, not being able to serve shrimp because they couldn't get it, and they're putting in a claim. And how are you seeing all these? claims that are coming out of this as they go back from the coast into the areas where they're, you know, suppliers, restaurants, others in other parts of the country. Are, are those claims in your in your mind also part of this process? They're part of the process. And obviously, you'd have to prove that, that the, 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 your inability to get seafood out of the Gulf, and that's going to be a problem mm-hmm. nationwide without any doubt. Mm-hmm. Their claims would not be as good. But that doesn't mean they don't have a claim. Gotcha. But uh, right here in Montgomery, for example, we have one one business here that gets all of their seafood from the Gulf, and they they specialize in nothing but Gulf seafood. Well, they they have already shut down here, and they are you know, in Montgomery, Alabama, Interesting. on the coast. And you will have people and, and businesses like that. But the the real the the, the main damage and main hurt and injury is on the coast without any doubt. I mean, those folks have been devastated. And is the fund, Jerry, is it, obviously it's for individuals, but is it also contemplated that cities and other uh, no. organizations uh, that are affected would have to go there as well? Uh, governments uh, are not paid out of Feinberg's uh, fund. Uh, okay. The $20 billion fund, is is, is is a few aspects of that that concern me. For example, the only company responsible to pay in that in that situation under that fund is, is a production company, a U.S. company, a BP U.S. company incorporated in Delaware. Mm-hmm. And they're, the only thing they're pledging future drilling in the Gulf. So that there's nothing else backing up that fund. And they're not paying it all at once. They're paying it in increments, uh, installments. And the first, if I remember correctly, was in the neighborhood of Three, maybe three point five billion. Well, suppose they go bankrupt. You have nothing else from BP to back up that fund, so you may not get the second installment. You may not get the third installment. But even if you got all of them, it's not going to be adequate to cover the damages. For example, Louisiana, the lawyers representing the state there tell us that their claim so far is eight point some odd billion dollars just in losses. You think you're going to be able to pierce the the, the foreign corporation? The, we do. In fact, that's that's why the court system is so important because you're not limited there, like mm-hmm. like this fund limits you, and you can go after anybody who has responsibility. For example, it's going to be interesting to see who owns the company that manufactures uh, the main chemical put in the Gulf. Mm. It, it's going to be interesting to find out that it's probably BP and Exxon. Well, the the beat goes on. Yeah, Tony. I mean, it's, I was, it's you know, an ounce prevention is worth a pound of cure, and I, <laughs> it, the the question that has to be asked is, you know, could this have been prevented? I mean, a lot of people called uh, the defendant's actions reckless, I think, including the president. But what could or what should BP have done to prevent this or to make it? What could they have done differently? They left out some safety features. Uh, one particular thing they could have put in there using in other parts of the world. Cost about five hundred thousand dollars would have would have shut it down. You had, you had other problems, design problems. You had uh, early warnings. They had warnings weeks ahead of, of the spill that they were heading toward a dangerous situation, and they ignored a great deal of this. They were rushing. They were rushing to get this well into production. It was it was a very very valuable well with great potential. And they made some shortcuts, did some things, decisions that were made. In fact, the congressional testimony has been devastating for not only BP, but Transocean, Halliburton. And, you know, who knows? Uh, we, 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 it's a long way before we can say with certainty that this happened and it caused this. And there's so many possible causes and potential causes and probable causes that it's going to take uh, a great deal of investigation. and You can't depend on BP's investigation because it was self-serving without any doubt. Mm-hmm. It, it pointed fingers in every other direction, kept a little bit of blame for itself, but uh, not nearly enough. Well, BP has said publicly, of course, that uh, the company is going to work 
until the job is completed, that they're going to clean it all up and they're going to make everyone whole. And, and, and they certainly have a tremendous PR uh, television uh, operation going for that purpose. Yeah. What are your hopes as you sit here today, Jerry? What are your hopes for your clients down the road uh, in terms of getting the compensation they, they, they deserve and, and getting this environment cleaned up down there? All right. Let me back up and just m- mention one thing about what BP has said and what their public pronouncements have been. Go back and look and see what Exxon said in Alaska mm-hmm. right after the spill. When they started having the mass meetings, they were telling folks that we're going to do exactly what BP has now said. We're going to pay all legitimate claims in full. And you're going to be satisfied. We're going to clean up the environment. And they wound up one meeting by saying this. You can get this from go to the you can Google it and find it. They said, you folks don't realize how lucky y'all are that Exxon caused this problem for you because we're going to fix it. Now that's that's pretty strong. And 20 years later, uh, you still have problems in Alaska. You can still find oil just simply by scooping up dirt. You'll find oil under the surface of the dirt. But back to here, this situation, the current present problem, our, our goal for every client we represent is to make sure that they get fully, adequately, completely satisfied insofar as payment for their not only short-term losses, but all their future losses. And we're committed to doing that. We've set up a, an operation within the firm with adequate lawyers and support staff and experts to do whatever necessary to make sure that, that the people we represent are treated fairly and, and have, a, have an opportunity for full compensation. But the responsible parties need to be penalized also. They don't need to get off the hook by simply paying back what folks have lost because you you will never be able to pay everybody for the the value of the mental anguish and the concern. For example, you've had at least one suicide, a family that we represented, where the breadwinner in the family, who was a boat owner, committed suicide hmm. because he couldn't pay his crews, couldn't pay his bills felt that he'd been more or less a, a failure for his family and unexpectedly without any notice commit suicide. And it was, Amazing. I mean, you've, you've got Tragic. folks, you, you, you got folks that are, that, are, that are hurt mentally, physically, economically, and it all, it, 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 you really can't put a value on it. Well, Jerry, it's hard to imagine anyone fighting harder for their clients than you. And I guess if, if I was BP, I wouldn't want to see you on the other side of that courtroom. So uh, with that, I think we'll wrap this up. Jerry, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Uh, the easiest way is, is they can go to our website, BeasleyAllen.com. Mm-hmm. I think it's simply this call. Uh, we list it in the phone book. And, uh, why, don't you give but, us, why don't you give us the phone number? Okay, it's 334-269-2343. Great. Uh, Tony, how about yourself, if someone wanted to talk to you? Yeah, they can uh, reach me at 800-344-7452 or simply look me up at ringlerassociates.com. And you can find all Ringler Associates uh, at ringlerassociates.com. And, of course, you can download all the Ringler radio shows. We've had quite a few of them and uh, on a lot of different topics I think you'd find interesting. Uh, also, uh, go to the legaltalknetwork.com. Legaltalknetwork.com also has all of the Ringler radio shows. And you can really download them right from iTunes onto your iPod and uh, actually walk around the park and listen to Jerry Beasley talk about the BP spill. So with that, Jerry, thanks again for joining us. Uh, very enlightening. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Tony. And y'all, y'all do great work, and I appreciate that. Thank you. And Tony, thank thanks, you. Jerry. You're very welcome. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye now. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network. Its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Thanks for listening to Ringler Radio. In its sixth year on Legal Talk Network, with over a half a million listeners, Ringler Associates, where experience counts. Since 1975, Ringler Associates has provided the finest structured settlement services to all parties involved in physical injury claims. Ringler Radio is made possible in part by the life markets that issue structured settlement annuities, including Allstate, American General, Liberty Life, MetLife, New York Life, John Hancock, and Prudential. Prudential.